Hello, my name is Zach McCurdy. I work in the Institutional Marketing Department here at Grand Valley State University. You are here watching this video because you will be contributing to a website at Grand Valley. You will be using the CMS, which stands for Content Management System. If you have any questions on how to use the CMS, we have several other trainings available. Visit the web team page if you wish to learn more. Today, I am here to talk to you about web page accessibility and what is that? Web page accessibility is the practice of making web pages user friendly for individuals with disabilities. So why should you care about making a website accessible? I'll give you three reasons. One, it makes your web page more usable, more on this later. Two, it's the right thing to do. And three, it's the law. Here are some statistics for you. In 2017, there were 814 website accessibility lawsuits filed in the federal court. In 2018, that number nearly tripled to 2,258. In order for web page accessibility to work, a workplace culture must be established. Grand Valley has made a commitment towards web page accessibility. As a user of our CMS, it is my responsibility and it is your responsibility to have a basic understanding of web page accessibility. So some myths and misconceptions about web page accessibility. I have broken it down into five different misconceptions. First, it only benefits a small minority. This is far from the truth. Statistics vary, but anywhere between 20 to 25% of the population have some sort of disability. That's one in four. Second, making a web page accessible only affects those with disabilities. This is also far from the truth. When you make a web page accessible, it makes it easier for people on mobile devices, different web browsers, older computers, etc. It also makes it easier for search engines such as Google to return better results. Third, taking a website that already exists and making it accessible is easy. Again, very false, it's not. It is much easier to design for accessibility than it is to retrofit. Think of it like building a house. It would be nearly impossible to install the electrical if all the walls are already put up. Fourth, making a web website accessible means making it ugly. Again, this couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, most of the features used in making a website accessible are invisible. Those are things such as alt text, headings, and transcripts. And last, but certainly not least, fifth, it's expensive. Of course, there is a cost when it comes to building a website. Time, money, effort, all of those things. But what's even more expensive are lawsuits. And you know what's even more expensive than that is negative publicity. So website accessibility really matters. It matters to everyone, and it's the right thing to do. So let's talk about disabilities. There are three different types of disabilities, permanent, temporary, and situational. Permanent disabilities are a physical or mental illness or condition that affects a major life function over a long time. Some permanent disabilities include individuals who are deaf, blind, or cognitively impaired, such as Down syndrome. Temporary disabilities are a physical or mental disability which hampers your ability to perform responsibilities for a short period of time. Some temporary disabilities include individuals who have a broken limb, hand injuries, or a short-term impairment following a medical treatment or surgery. Situational disabilities are disabilities that can generally be resolved by a change in the environment and can be solved quickly by the user. Some situational disabilities include a room being too bright, a room being too loud to hear a video, or the inability to see a screen due to a glare from the sun. These can typically be resolved by the user, such as moving to a different room or closing the blinds from the sun. So let's expand on our discussion of the different types of disabilities and talk about the specifics of who are we helping when we make our website accessible and the technology they would use to help aid them. First, let's discuss users with visual disabilities, such as low vision, blindness, and colorblindness. 
For a person who is visually disabled, navigating a website could be very challenging. Here's what the gvsu.edu website could look like to a person with no visual disabilities. For a person with low vision, they would need to be aided by technology in order to view the website. Here's a demonstration of how a person with low vision would see the GVSU website. Now, here's what the website looks like using a piece of software called ZoomText. ZoomText is just one of the many examples of a program tailored for users with low vision. As you can see, with the help of ZoomText, the person with low vision is able to see the website. Next, we will be discussing navigating a website for someone who is blind. For these individuals, they rely on a piece of technology called a screen reader. The screen reader will speak the content of a website to a blind person. Going back to the GVSU homepage, here is how a blind individual would browse the page. Chrome, Web Team, Grand Valley State University, Google Chrome window, link, skip to main content, visited link image, Grand Valley State University logo, search people and pages, edit text, search, visited link, Web Team, Be visited link, about us, menu, collapsed menu pop-up link, projects, collapsed menu pop-up link, collapsed menu pop-up link, content creation, collapsed menu pop-up link, tools, visited link, what's new, visited link, contact us, link, examples include admissions applications, e-benefits, seminar registration, and the online curriculum development, Camtasher 2008. And lastly, for someone who is colorblind. As an example, on this web page, it is asking for a person to click on a link that is red. For a person who is not colorblind, they would be able to easily find the answer. However, for a person who is colorblind, the page would look like this. A colorblind person would have no way of distinguishing the different choices. Now, let's discuss individuals who have auditory disabilities, such as deafness or hard of hearing. For a person who is hard of hearing or deaf, the answer is very straightforward. Videos must have captions or transcripts, such as closed captioning. And the transcripts must be provided for audio-only content, such as podcasts. In order to ensure that dis individuals with disabilities are able to navigate the web pages we are creating, we must follow some rules when it comes to building a web page. Here are a few things you will want to avoid when creating your web page. Fancy fonts. In this example, you will see that while these fonts look nice, they are also harder to read. You will want to make sure you choose fonts that are very easy to read. Text justification. If the text is configured as justified, it creates spaces between words. These spaces make it harder to read, especially for those users with a visual impairment. You will want to make sure that in most cases, the text is justified to the left. Another thing that you will want to avoid is using color to convey information. So in this example, we have a list of people. The text says CMS administrators are listed in red. For a person who is visually impaired, they will not be able to tell which person the text is referring to. So we've talked about some of the things you need to avoid when creating your web page. Let's talk about some visual things you can do to help make your web page more accessible. If you are trying to emphasize a word or phrase, you could change the font to be bold or italic. You could also use all capital letters. You could put asterisks around the word or phrase. You could place an image placeholder in front of the content. Before the word or phrase that you want to emphasize, you can have the word important before it. And you could use an image before the content and make the alt text the word important. So let's talk about alt text and what it is. Alt text is also known as alternative text. It is a description of an image in case that image fails to load. It is an invisible description that is read out loud by a screen reader. Alt text should strive to answer a simple question. What is the main point being conveyed by this image? The alt text should not only describe the superficial details of the image, it should convey the information or emotion you want the user to gain from looking at that image. 
There are seven different types of images as defined by the World Wide Web Consortium. The GVSU CMS is concerned with the following four types. Informative images, functional images, images of text, and complex images. Informative images are images that represent concepts, information, or emotions. They are typically graphics, photos, or illustrations. The alt text should be a short description to convey the essential information of the image. Functional images are images that are used as a link or a button that have some sort of additional functionality. The alt text should describe the functionality of the link or button rather than the details of the image. Examples of functional images are an image of a printer icon to represent a print function. Images of text are images of readable text. If the image is not a logo, you should avoid using text in images. However, if images or text are used, the alt text must contain the same words that are used in the image. Complex images are things such as graphs and diagrams. To convey the data or information, you must provide a full text equivalent of the data or information. Next, let's show an example of each of these discussed images. This is an example of an informative image. The alt text should be a short description to support the idea of the image or convey the emotion of the picture. The example alt text for this picture could be, student proudly holding diploma above her head after graduating from Grand Valley. This is an example of a functional image. Each of these buttons have a different function. The alt text should describe what the button does rather than the description of the button. The example alt text could be, edit current version of the page, view current version of this page, views past versions of this page, and delete this page. Next is an example of an image of text. It is always best to actually use text rather than an image of text. One exception to this rule would be the use of a company logo. The alt text for this would be Grand Valley State University Institutional Marketing. Last is the complex image, such as a graph or chart. If the complex image cannot be described in a concise way, roughly 140 characters, then the information needs to be provided in another way. One recommendation would be to include the details of an image as a caption or to provide a link to the information to a separate document or web page. Please note that the alt text for the complex image is still required and should describe the general point of the image. The example alt text for this complex image would be survey data of customer satisfaction from 2016, 2017, and 2018. Alt text does not need to include image of, photo of, logo of, etc. The screen reader will notice that this is an image and state that prior to reading the alt text. When it comes to organizing the layout of your web page, it often makes sense to use headings. Headings communicate the organization of the web page. The main heading or the most important heading often has the rank of one. When it comes to accessibility, it is important that the headings are in correct order. You may have an instance where you have to have a hyperlink to another page. If that is the case, you will want to accurately convey the destination within the hyperlink. Here's what that means. If you want to link to gvsu.edu, you do not want the text to simply say, click here. Instead, you would want it to say something about, visit the GVSU homepage and hyperlink that portion of the sentence. Next, let's talk about multimedia, in particular, audio and video. If you are creating or linking to a video, such as YouTube, you must make sure that a transcript is available, such as closed captioning. If you are creating or linking to a piece of audio, such as a podcast, a transcript must be available as well. One last thing about videos. If you are linking to a video, you will want to make sure to avoid videos with blinking lights or strobe effects. 
These videos can have an adverse effect to those users prone to epilepsy. Now, if you are going to have forms or documents on your page, you are also going to want to make sure that those documents themselves are accessible. That being said, if you have a choice of creating a page on the CMS or uploading a document, it is always best to create a page on the CMS. The CMS is built to handle accessibility better for users with disabilities. For Microsoft products, including Word, there is an option for Accessibility Checker. This is a great resource to see if your document is accessible. For PDFs, it is a little bit more difficult. You will want to reference the Disability Support Resources website. Also, for any web link you have any document, such as a PDF or Word document, you will want to make sure that you provide the actual link in the text. This is so that people can copy and paste the address. So that's it. You should now have a basic understanding of how to make your web page accessible. Remember that web page accessibility isn't something that we should do, it's something that we have to do, and it's the right thing to do. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact someone from the web team. Use the link in the video description to learn how to contact us, and thank you for watching.